Hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great day. I'm not going to be long. Uh, before I get started, you know the routine. Click the like button, the share button. But if you really, truly are engaged by what you see in here, if you believe in the work that we've done in the black community for more than 30 years, you can check the website to see and everything. But if you're a follower, you know the work we've done. We need your support. Look in the description box, click the link and give. It's that simple. Look, for years, I've been asked a question. Matter of fact, some of my greatest research came from the question, why has it been 100 plus years since the Emancipation Proclamation and yet blacks still seem to have gained no true uh, ground in the socioeconomic environment? Uh, and while we seem to make gains in academia and whatever, we have no socioeconomic progression. We still own roughly around 1% of this nation's wealth and we own no real true power. So with that being said, I have gone to great lengths to talk about generational trauma and its influence on our decisions make, decision making. Um, some 20 years ago, I developed the collective cognitive bias uh, theory, which I have now re uh, renamed as the collective cognitive bias syndrome. It's a collective idea of a perception about reality that a group holds as a collective. And when it comes to the power and what we see in this world, there's a reason why we tend to need the approbation and approval of the system of the white collective of anything associated with the power structure in this company. That's why we push so heavily for the Juneteenth uh, holiday to become a national holiday, something that originated in Galveston, Texas, something that originated in the state of Texas, something we've celebrated for as long as, of course, I've ever known. Uh, used to be somewhat of a very isolated, geographically restricted type thing. Some people, as, the, as, as we moved away from Texas and other places, took it with us. But it was us, and it had a symbolic meaning because Juneteenth represented the 19th of June in 1867 when blacks finally in, in, the, south, in, in, in the southern regions of Texas, primarily Galveston, uh, were made aware of the fact that they were free. Now, uh, we've celebrated that, but we needed it to be a national holiday, and we never thought out the ramifications of what that would look like. And now, what we did is we, we commercialized it just by saying we sit up and the very people we claim to be under the foot of benefit from the very thing that we say they their ancestors caused. And so, you can go on, and that's a very mild thing. The bigger thing is how are we getting there? About 12 years ago, Dr. Michael Blanchard and I were having a, a, an in-depth discussion and he said, Doc, let me ask you a question. Why do you believe that with all the information that's out there, with all the people like Dr. Claude Anderson, yourself, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Naima Abbar, uh, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, Neely Fiddle Jr. And we went on and we, we were talking about uh, the different people and he said, why do you feel we have made no progress? Why do you feel, and I said, uh, my words were exactly to him and he quoted it, he even put it in his book is that facts mean absolutely nothing to the conditioned mind um, and then I went on to elaborate on that, we don't realize the power of media and never has the power of media been more influenced you gotta understand, everything that feeds us our information comes from a source that does not represent our interest, and what feeds our information feeds our neurological adaptation or our neurological development or we can say our programming and our conditioning. So then whatever I open my gates to, it's what's going to be the predominant force that guides my parameters, my paradigms, how I see and view the world alike. When we talk about collective cognitive bias, what we're talking about is a collective idea of the role we play in this world. We play a subject, uh, subjugated, um, uh, 
suppressed role in this country. We identify with that role. We identify with it so much we play it out in our lives. No matter what opportunities sit in front of us, we look to them as being the means in which we must have it. So we can have the opportunity to go out and do something on our own, but if they don't co-sign it, we don't see the value in it. We can have 50 people tell us, hey, look, I've done the research and it's all there. But until they say it, it doesn't matter. But the bigger problem is, is the propaganda machine paints the entire picture and frames the entire picture. Everybody is exposed to it at some level. The problem is whites aren't negatively impacted by at the level. Everybody's impacted by it. If you're not a power broker, you're being impacted by it because you're being manipulated and controlled. But whites are part of the privileged society. So they're going to benefit from it just by simply being white. Uh, and then they've changed it to where now non-whites who would not be of European descent can now declare themselves to be white. And so what does that mean? That means that they get to boast their numbers, to their numbers, which is on the decline. Uh, if it wasn't for immigration, uh, we would definitely have a decline in quote unquote uh, the white population, but the slight increase that we have experienced has been because of my uh, immigration. Uh, but the, obviously they're not telling you that, but that's that's the case. Well, here's the problem. While we are letting our kids hit Instagram, I talked about this probably five years ago when the study first came out, uh, that there are a number of different studies that were showing that for young developing teens, especially girls, that Instagram uh, Snapchat and a couple of other spaces were highly negatively impacting um, their mental health and that there should be something done about it. Nothing really said. Everybody goes on and so we continue and we see a, a spike in suicide among young black girls specifically. And to the point that ages 5 to 13 young black girls lead in this statistical category. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's, it's not just about mental health. It's about total self-awareness. It's about total uh, positioning and the opportunities for us to do something in this world and how we see those opportunities or how we see them as being uh, a lack. Our idea of lack and scarcity comes from what's constantly being pumped to us through these channels. Now, social media has become so powerful that we can't put down our phones. And if you look around uh, some of the countries we look at and we say, okay, they don't have the freedoms we have, but they're making major power moves, Russia, China, uh, where you're starting to see, especially in China, the limitation on what they TikTok is a company that originated in China and China doesn't have TikTok. Uh, Facebook, um, I mean, literally, they control the one social media element and component that's there and they limit it. They limit the amount of screen time that children get, the amount of time uh, any child in the country can play games. They can monitor this through uh, the way their internet system and provider systems are set up and they hold parents accountable. Parents can literally lose their children for allowing them to spend too many times on games. Our kids are literally babysitted by games and these games have a negative impact. They present negative paradigms. They present negative realities. It also triggers certain uh, different neurotransmitter releases uh, where you need to have a larger dose of oxytocin. You're getting dopamine rushes. Dopamine is great. In, 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 in sporadic instances because it gives you an extreme high, but do dopamine as a neurotransmitter is a rapid firing neurotransmitter that tends to destroy neuroreceptors. So over time you're firing and you're becoming numb to it because you're killing the neuroreceptors. Well, as you become numb to it, you up the doses trying to get the same fix. This is how you become addicted. But it doesn't just happen with drugs. It happens with behaviors like sex, like, <clears throat> like gambling, uh, like playing video games, like staying on your phone. You don't realize you're doing it, but you're trying to get a fix because your body is demanding that fix it had, that feeling it had. Dopamine hits the pleasure reward center, but it hits it different than serotonin and, diff and, and, and it, it creates a, a different uh, 
chem biochemical balance uh, than when you're producing oxytocin, which is a calming factor, which is a solidifying, balancing uh, neurotransmitter. And so all of these different things are happening and we don't have a clue of it because again, what have I told you so many times in the past? We lose because we don't understand how things work. I've been talking about propaganda. I told you about um, the book, Propaganda by Edward Bernays. I told you about Brainwash by Tom Burrell. We've talked about uh, a number of different things in my book, The, uh, Af uh, the Undoing of the African-American Mind, which is my book, and so many other things that happen. But if you want to really truly break it down, we're in last place because we've been programmed to be there. And there are things that are happening to us that we're literally co-signing. We're literally cheering it on. We're literally pushing for it because we've been programmed to believe that it's in our best interest, although the numbers don't add up. We always talk about the mouth not mouthing. But we'll look at all of the things we've gotten and sit up and say, look, that's what we're supposed to do, so we're gonna do it. Uh, prime example, since the Voter uh, Voter Rights Act was passed in the early 60s, blacks have consistently turned out for the uh, past 60 years in an increasing number, every presidential election cycle is sub one, and they have turned out in increasing numbers and they have voted religiously at uh, at, a, at a rate above 90% for Democrats and yet there's no marked gain or anything that we can account for of any true significance that we've ever got in, ch in exchange for our, our vote. Um, and while we've been told that it's not just about blacks that, you know, I'm the president of the entire United States. I'm not just the president of blacks. We know who we're talking about here, Barack Obama. We know for a fact that things can be done because the LGBT community has gotten plenty. The Asian community has gotten plenty. The Latino community has gotten plenty. Let's not talk about the influx of immigrants that they are pushing into blue states, dim states, uh, dim cities, and putting them in black occupied areas and funding and financing them, allowing them to have gun rights uh, without any kind of criminal background check into where they came from and why they're fleeing and what they're coming here from uh, and for. Uh, they, they are simply there. The governor of uh, Illinois, if I'm not mistaken, the governor of Illinois has signed a bill that will allow immigrants to become police officers. So let's see. You're coming here, you, you, you don't have a real true black ground check because you're coming from another country which limits the ability to check into what you did and who you are depending on that country's uh, systems and how their systems are reported and connected to international systems. But you're here and now and you can apply and you can actually become a police officer. And I guarantee you that the immigrant that becomes a police officer who is not a citizen, they're an immigrant, but they become a police officer. Now, I guarantee you, they will not be in the upscale communities where white people are living, arresting and ticketing and questioning white people. They will be placed in uh, lower income areas, which are gonna be predominantly black areas, and they're going to be there harassing black people. And it's amazing that we will sit by and co-sign it and fight for it. We, 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 we jump on everybody's fight because we're naturally caring people but we jump on everybody's fight and we never ever take the time to strategically look and ask ourselves hey is this good for us what are we going to get if this happens we didn't ask ourselves when we went for dr king's birthday to be a holiday we didn't ask what that would look like when we went to get juneteenth as a national holiday we didn't ask ourselves well what will this look like and now we are not really happy with it some people just i just want the day off Take the damn day off. If you can't take the day off, that's an indicator that you aren't as free as you thought you were and that you should be working on solidifying power. Power isn't going to come from acquiescence or, or compliance. Acquiescence and compliance is what is exactly giving them the power. White supremacy without black compliance is neutralized. 
white supremacy becomes powerful when black compliance underwrites it. When we sit up and we move along and we go along and all we, the worst they're gonna get from us is a collective temper tantrum through a riot or a protest. Has no power, absolutely no power, doesn't change. It, it lets them know you're mad, which they, 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 they need to know, but they need to know what you're gonna do with your mad. And what happens is when you get mad, they say, well, they're not organizing. They're not creating any type of agenda. There's no collective agenda. There's no collective plan. How long have I been saying that? We have no co collective agenda. We have no plan. Everybody has a plan except us. And then we're wondering why we're in last place. Well, we plan to fail by not planning. And we have not taken a an accurate assessment and evaluation of the status quo and the standard and what it means for us. We are buying into the propaganda driven. America's the greatest place on the planet. And we have sold out for it to the point that we've almost taken a mindset that I would just rather be a second class citizen in the greatest place on the planet than to really truly fight and experience freedom, even if it means leaving this place to build somewhere else. And, and we have to be asking ourselves, what does this look like and what are we willing to do and what's the next step and we don't. So I just had to stop and talk about this. I'm gonna be breaking this down even more, but the propaganda machines. I remember some years ago when urban, urban intellectuals came out with a social media platform. Most people didn't even know it existed. I pushed it, I shared it, I joined, and it was a mirror of Facebook. I mean, literally not the same color scheme, but the same literal makeup, uh, a feed. You got your own page, you post on your page, it goes to your feed. You can you can befriend people and you can, and you can have these exchanges. You can share links and all the same things you could do on Facebook. You could do on Urban Intellectuals, except it was a black space. And the beautiful thing about it is a lot of the things that Facebook was penalizing black people for doing, you could have done on Urban Intellectuals and we could have went there, but we didn't support it and it, they weren't able to sustain it. And so it came down. And so now you get urban intellectuals, they got flashcards and all that stuff like that, but they literally had built a social media platform. And that's some other things going on. Uh, my partnership with um, Alt Black Media, uh, we've definitely got some things going. We're putting up some things and we'll, but we really truly need to be doing this on the grander scale. We need to be sitting up and saying, look, for everything that comes out that is counterintuitive to what we say we are trying to do, that needs to be a counter message that comes out with it. We need to be releasing content that is in counter, um, a countermeasure and a counter notion of what's being pushed because we are being programmed whether we want to admit it or not. And I'm going to get into the dynamics of how this programming works in an upcoming session, but I didn't want to go real deep on it, but I did want to talk about it. We are where we are because we have refused to learn how things work. We're where we are because we have refused to pursue power necessary to do something beyond what we've done or been able to accomplish, that's on us. Um, we cannot expect the oppressor to give us the power to liberate ourselves. That has never been how things worked and it is not how things will work now. So then the question is, what will we do? On that note, look, I'm out of here. Again, if you believe in the work we're doing, look in the description box and support the work. If you, uh, if you are encouraged, inspired, uh, enlightened by what you've seen and heard, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. On that note, I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.